Today on The Daily Dose, Pandemic Typhus. Typhus victims experience nausea, fever and rash, progressive delirium, gangrenous sores, severe headaches, and a piercing sensitivity to light. The name typhus comes from the ancient Greek word typhos, meaning smoky or lazy, which describes the state of mind of those afflicted by late-stage disease. Before the creation of a vaccine in World War II, typhus held rank with some of the worst human epidemics throughout modern history. The responsible bacteria, identified today as Rickettsia prausicchia, is now known to be widespread in rodent populations, although it ultimately transmits to humans via mites, fleas, body lice, and the North American flying squirrel. Until the middle of the 20th century, typhus epidemics exploded under conditions of overcrowding, environmental pollution, poverty, hunger, physical exhaustion, and war. American bacteriologist Hans Zinser once wrote that typhus came to be the inevitable and expected companion of war and revolution. No encampment, no campaigning army, and no besieged city escaped its wrath. In 1489, when the Spanish attacked the Moors in Granada, of the 25,000-man army active in the campaign, 3,000 were lost to combat while 17,000 were lost to typhus. During the Thirty Years' War, when Catholics, Lutherans, and Calvinists fought for religious superiority in Central Europe, typhus again felled more troops than combat. During one battle in 1632, when Swedish King Adolphus and Catholic commander Baron von Wallenstein dug in their troops for battle, Typhus struck down 18,000 soldiers on either side, forcing both commanders to withdraw their remaining troops and call an end to the engagement. During Napoleon's retreat from Moscow in 1812, of his 500,000-man fighting force, 80,000 were lost to Typhus. Like the First World War itself, Typhus began in Serbia with 10,000 losses as early as November of 1914. Within six months, the typhus death toll had risen sharply to 150,000. While delousing stations kept the disease in check for troops on the Western Front, by the end of the war, typhus took nearly 3 million lives in Russia, Poland, and Romania while an additional three million were lost during the Russian Civil War of 1917 to 1921. Adding to the already horrific conditions inflicted upon Jews and enemy combatants in Nazi concentration camps, typhus took the lives of many who might have otherwise survived the inhuman ordeal, including the young diarist Anne Frank and her sister Margot. In North America, typhus epidemics struck Philadelphia in 1837, followed by an outbreak in 1843 conquered New Hampshire, which killed the son of Franklin Pierce, the 14th president of the United States. Similar outbreaks ravaged Baltimore, Memphis, and Washington, D.C. between the years of 1865 and 1873. The rise of the Industrial Revolution further strengthened typhus as a killer disease. Combined with foul housing, overflowing cesspools, poverty, malnutrition, and worker fatigue, typhus was a key component in holding human life expectancies to less than 40 years of age. Today, typhus remains virtually wiped out in North America, thanks to the advent of antibiotics such as tetracycline, an effective array of vaccines, and even more effective water treatment practices and rodent lice eradication efforts. In the third world, however, while typhus remains reasonably in check, fast rising urban growth rates in Asia and Sub Saharan Africa present a dangerous potential for additional life threatening epidemics. 
And there you have it, the filth disease, typhus. Today on The Daily Dose. Get your nerd on with The Daily Dose. And if you enjoyed today's episode, share the link with a friend or colleague so that they too can learn something new every day.